Yo guys, what's going on? It's back again here bringing that video. This one's going to be doing a um, an interesting video. This is going to be comparing my two favorite anime of all time, uh, Dragon Ball Z to Naruto, and systematically uh, comparing the two, subjectively of course, because, you know, these type of things, you, you can't ever really say they're objective. It's, it's subjective. There's no question about it. A lot of it's based on my opinion and, uh, you know, some of my research and that kind of stuff to say what is the better anime Dragon Ball Z or Naruto um, you know of course there there is some kind of you know time lapse in between the uh, the two there's there was quite a few years in between and uh, you know when Dragon Ball Z started and when Naruto started you know everything was different and um, you know graphics and everything had been improved um, a lot of things had you know gotten better uh, overall in anime in general um, so that will be taken into consideration as well. But for their time, which show was better? Um, with regards to Naruto, it will contain, um, you know, the first, there. there's two series really of Naruto in terms of anime. You have Naruto and then Naruto Shippuden or the Hurricane Chronicles uh, in English. Um, they're basically the same thing, whereas uh, vice versa with Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z are not the same. Likewise, Dragon Ball GT and Dragon Ball Z are not the same. So this will include all of Naruto, Shippuden, and just Naruto, but it will not include any other parts of Dragon Ball Z except for Dragon Ball Z. reason for that being is because Dragon Ball was so much different than Dragon Ball Z. It wasn't based around the fighting. It was more of an, uh, a silly comedy adventure type show. So Dragon Ball is not going to be included. But, but Naruto, on the other hand, it hasn't really changed much between Shippuden and the original Naruto, uh, even though he, there's a time skip and he's grown up it's still essentially the same show. I can't really say that it shifted in the same way Dragon Ball Dragon Ball Z did. Okay, so that's it for the introduction. Um, let's go into the categories now. So the categories we have here are um, graphics for their time, popularity or appeal in other words, um, you know, widespread worldwide, action, so the fighting sequences, you know, um, the different types of, you know, um, you know fighting, techniques and movements and you know visuals for the fighting and just uh, overall how we feel about the uh, the fighting and the action uh, story of the plot so you know um, throughout the whole show you know the overall layout of the plot and which one is superior in terms of that sound so you know voice actors um, intros background sound all that kind of stuff and finally characters so the characters between the two shows and uh, you know which uh, which we um, which we prefer. So, okay, that's it for the introduction. Let's get into the uh, nitty gritty. Okay, so yeah, so the first category we're going to get into is uh, graphics. So graphics between the shows, the quality of the video, um, the uh, the art style, the the drawings, um, how they flow, how everything flows. Um, of course, this one is heavily affected by the time they were released because anime always gets better. You know, the graphics always get improved. Um, and there is a considerable difference between the graphics um, between uh, Naruto and Dragon Ball Z, neither of which are perfect. Um, both had a lot of problems when they came out. Both had a lot of trouble um, at certain points. Uh, I'll point out in Naruto, the final battle with, uh, with Pain. Uh, in that battle, there was some really weird art and graphics and stuff to the point where they had like roadrunner feet when they were running. And uh, I think they were like shooting laser beams at one point at each other and stuff like that. So really weird at that certain time. And there's other parts in Naruto too where the art and the graphics really was strange to watch. Um, Dragon Ball Z on the other hand, sometimes, you know, they don't fill in the backgrounds all that well. Um, you know, sometimes the, uh, you know, the characters, especially from the beginning, when it first started, you know, anime was, it just wasn't at that point yet where, you know, you had uh, some really flush, you know, bright colors and, uh, and everything was really nice. Uh, at the beginning, Dragon Ball Z's animation is a little bit rough, but that's the way it was at that time. Every show was like that. Um, it's just the timing. So between the two, I don't really think you can really say one had better graphics than the other. They both have their pros. They both have their cons, neither of which are perfect. And compared to what else was out at the time, neither of which were the best. So because they are a show that's a long-running show, it makes sense that they can't always have the highest quality of graphics with the amount of episodes they put out. So for each of these shows, I'm going to give them both an 8. So in this category, it's a tie. For their time, I feel like they're both equal. I don't really think you can say that one really has much better graphics for their time than the other. Um, one thing about Naruto is it has really nice intros, and they look beautiful but then it doesn't carry over into the actual show itself. The intros are just the intros. 
you know, after that it goes right back to the same style of uh, graphics that you see. So in terms of graphics, this is a tie. Okay, moving on into uh, popularity or appeal. Now some people might say, oh, well this category doesn't really make sense. Um, but I think it does, and I think it deserves to be here. In terms of popularity or appeal, the reason why I included this is because something, you know, you may feel a certain way about the show, but, you know, a lot of people, other people out there may feel um, differently about the show. For their time, which one was, is more popular, was more popular, uh, and at this point, which one is, you know, is more popular. So, obviously, Dragon Ball Z has been over for a long time. Um, but I think that what's really important here about popularity and appeal is that it still has content coming out for it. It still has video games. Every year you get at least one or two or three new Dragon Ball Z games coming out all the time. You get new re-releases of the of the show on Blu-ray, Dragon Ball Kai, you know, it's just it's constantly always has new content coming out. Even though it's been done for, you know, however many years in Japan, there's still new stuff coming out all the time, which is really crazy. Um, Dragon Ball Z in terms of viewership and in terms of, you know, worldwide, it became a worldwide phenomenon. Okay, it was like Pokemon, sort of. Uh, and I think its viewership was even higher than Pokemon. The only difference was Pokemon had higher sales in the card game. But Dragon Ball Z, you know, had higher sales of the DVDs, had higher sales of, you know, and higher viewership overall when it was on, um, you know, worldwide. Naruto, in this category, is far inferior to Dragon Ball Z. It, it's a great show, and I love the show. It's one of my favorites ever. But for some reason, there's, I don't know why, but for some reason, it hasn't garnered the same kind of attention that Dragon Ball Z did. Now you could say it's because of the time. There's a lot of other animes like Bleach and other stuff and people are kind of animate out. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that if Dragon Ball Z started right now, in a couple years, everybody would be talking about it. Everybody would be like, wow, you got to check out this anime. It's absolutely amazing, you know, and everything like that. So in this category, Dragon Ball Z really smashes Naruto. Um, this is going to be a two-point lead for Dragon Ball Z. We're going to go 10-8 for this one in popularity and appeal. Dragon Ball Z being that it's still popular, being that it was probably the most popular anime in history, um, although that's kind of hard to determine, I gotta give it a 10, a perfect 10 for this because it, it's, it's done what almost no other anime has been able to do, worldwide appeal. Naruto struggles, but still good, gets an 8. Okay, moving on from that, we're gonna move on to the third category is action or fighting. Um, you know, these types of scenes, obviously these, these shows uh, the climax and everything. These are really fighting shows. You know, um, there's hardly any other themes. There's some comedy mixed in here and there, but primarily these are action fighting shows. So that, of course, has to be a category in this. It has to be right in there. Uh, both for their time have amazing action sequences, but I would have to say that when Dragon Ball Z came out, it really pushed the envelope for what we saw in action and fighting. It had scenes that, you know, were like nothing you've ever seen. I mean, you had 10 episode fights with these guys. You had 20 episodes, and some of the fighting sequences are amazing. You know, you've got one character, bashes the other character up, you know, hits them over to the right, slams them through a mountain, and then blasts them with an energy blast. That's pretty hard to top, especially when nobody really did it before. I mean, there were other animes before, um, you know, like Fist of the North Star and all these types of different shows that you had these, you know, type of fights going on. But Dragon Ball Z really took that and lifted it to a universal uh, platform where you have them doing it, you know, in space and stuff, planets exploding. I mean, this is stuff that, you know, I can't remember seeing in any other show uh, in terms of the fights. So, that, you know, just, just amazing fight scenes Dragon Ball Z for their time. Absolutely crazy. Naruto, on the other hand, has taken the fighting and making it, uh, or has made it a little bit more sophisticated. You know, you have different types of chakra. You have different types of techniques with eyes and different things like that. Strategies that characters have, which is very exciting to see. So obviously amazing fight sequences in that too. Um, but of course, Dragon Ball Z was, I want to say, is a little bit more focused on the fighting. And Naruto is a little bit less focused, um, but still has amazing sequences. And this one, this is a close round, um, and it could go either way. I feel like it's fair to give it Dragon Ball Z a 10 because it's some of the best fight, fight sequences, even still, in any anime ever. And I'm going to give Naruto a 9 in this category because it's, it's almost perfect. Um, and the fight sequences are amazing, but I just feel like for their time, Dragon Ball Z's were just a bit better. Okay, now we're going to get into another category for um, story or plot. So this one obviously is insanely important to any show. You got to have a good plot. You got to have a good story, or else you really don't have anything. You got nothing. 
So, um, which of these two has a better story? Well, let's go over Dragon Ball Z first. So, uh, Dragon Ball Z sometimes is, is uh, criticized as having kind of like a sim simplistic story, kind of as, you know, like WWE-ish, you know, wrestling-ish, some people would say. Um, and I don't agree with that. I think that's totally ridiculous. Um, let's let's just think about the story for a second. I mean, you have the main character who is revealed to be, you know, he's got all these powers in the first uh, in the first show in Dragon Ball, but you never really think that okay, maybe he's actually not from here. You know, like maybe he's from you know another planet or you know he's just you, you get that universal feel and that universal touch with Dragon Ball Z versus the original Dragon Ball. I mean, there were some hits in Dragon Ball that he wasn't from here, but you know you know what I'm saying. Like Raditz comes down right away and he's like, "You're a Saiyan." He's like, "What's a Saiyan?" You know, well, that's what you are. You're an alien. You're from another, you know, another, uh, you're another race. You're not a human. And, you know, basically lets him know about his history and his background. Um, that gives this a universal platform for which to work from. That is not easy to do. Anytime you deal with a universal platform, it is very difficult to, to write and keep that exciting, keep that interesting. The whole, the whole thing with Namek and with, uh, Cell and these stories and, uh, Boo is, uh, okay, Boo is not the greatest, but definitely with Cell coming back from the future and all these kinds of things and being the perfect android, and then with Frieza on the other planet, with the planet exploding with Namek, I mean, this is amazing storytelling. How about you've got a character like Vegeta who, you know, starts off as the bad guy in the first act and then eventually becomes a good guy, and, you know, there's the Majin Saga where he, you know, becomes evil again and fights. I mean, this is great. This is some great stuff. Yes, it is heavily focused on the fighting, Okay, but that doesn't mean the story sucks. I think the story in Dragon Ball Z is fantastic. Okay, and if you don't believe me, go read a few Superman comic books. Okay, where you start to see a universal platform, and you see how they use a character like Superman in a universal platform. I'm not going to bash on any Superman fans here, but compared to a story like Dragon Ball Z, you know these types of Superman stories I absolutely can't stand. I think they're horrible. Dragon Ball Z has a fantastic universal story that is, you know, not simple in the least and is fantastic. So for that, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 uh, for a really good story. Naruto, on the other hand, I feel like has an amazing story. Um, the way that there's mystery about it, you know, you have like Toby as a character and you don't know who he is. Is he Madara? Isn't he? You've got all these different characters coming in and out of the scenes. You've got uh, Akatsu and everything they're trying to do. You know, you've got all these different teams and, th you know, just tons of elements. You have a whole, like this whole world that, uh, that uh, has been created here for these characters. Uh, amazing story. So, in this category, I gotta give Naruto the lead. I gotta give it, uh, uh, this will be a 10 8 round. So, 10 for Naruto, um, you know, bringing it back up. Definitely, it's got one of the best stories, in my opinion. One of the best long running stories uh, with different things like, you know, you've got pain and you've got the mystery of who the leader is and just. It, it's it's very very uh, interesting in terms of the story in my opinion and the world that has been created for the characters. All right, now we're gonna get into sound. So in terms of sound of the shows, you know which one will I guess we'll deal with the um, sort of both both dubs of it, the English and the Japanese. So for Dragon Ball Z, I personally prefer the dub. I don't really like the uh, the Japanese version too too much. Um, although I think it's okay, you know, obviously it's got some famous theme songs from like uh, Chala, uh, Chala Head, um, Rock the Dragon, I love Rock the Dragon, one of my favorite intro theme songs. The voice actors in, um, in the, the dub version I like a lot. I like um, the actor for Goku, I like Vegeta, I like all their voices, all their voices sound great to me. Nobody is really too annoying in Dragon Ball Z in my opinion. Um, versus Naruto. I, I feel like Naruto, whether, you know, the, the Japanese version is not too bad, but the dub version of Naruto is horrible. The voice actor who plays Naruto, I think it's, I don't know who it is, it's probably actually some kind of kid. He has the most annoying, screechy voice, you know, and you don't want that for a main character. You just don't. Um, he sounds horrific. Um, but the theme songs for it, the intros and stuff like that, how they change them up all the time, I love that. And I really like some of the sound in, uh, in Naruto. The background themes for both of these shows are excellent and timeless. The Cell theme by Bruce Faulkner is one of my favorite themes ever, if not my favorite. Um, the Pain theme in Naruto is fantastic. So I don't really think, you know, in this category you can really go one or the other really gets more points. I'm going to give them both an 8. They both have great sound. Not the best ever, but definitely good sound. Okay, so the last category is going to be characters. Uh, one of the most important categories, because if you don't like the characters of the show, you're not going to like the show. Uh, this category for me is um, 
this is a draw, and here's why. This is a 9-9 nine, nine for me, and here's why. It's because Naruto has a lot more characters. Um, there's no question about that. I mean, they've got all these different teams. Naruto's got multiple senseis, teachers. You know, Goku really only has Master Roshi, and he kind of figures out everything else on his, on his own. Um, so in terms of, you know, the quantity, Naruto has a more bigger quantity of cool characters. Definitely. They have more characters, and they've got a lot of cool characters. But here's why it's a tie. Dragon Ball Z has the quality, in my opinion. You know, uh, how many people like Naruto as a character by himself better than Goku? I mean, seriously, how many of you? How many of you like Sasuke more than Vegeta? I mean, come on. Like, is there anyone out there that's like, I like Sasuke better than Vegeta? You know, get the hell out of here. Don't even comment if you think that. I mean, come on. Vegeta is like one of the coolest characters in any show ever. And Sasuke is horrible. And here's another thing that's, uh, that I want to mention too. In Japan, they did a poll, okay, where tons and tons of people voted. Uh, lots of fans. And Sasuke was actually more popular than Naruto, okay? The actual main character of the show. That's ridiculous. That tells you how annoying some people find the main character in Naruto, Naruto, to be. And he can be very annoying in a lot of ways. Some of the things he does and says is like, is this guy supposed to be the savior of everybody, the hero? You know, he does these stupid things during battle. Like sometimes Goku will say some silly things and do some stupid things outside of battle. But you never really get a sense that he doesn't, he's not with it. In most recent uh, manga issue of Naruto, he's in a fight against um, Tobi and with B and, um, and Kakashi's there. And, you know, Kakashi says to him, like, you know, Pay attention, Naruto. Don't you know what I mean? Just just because I'm here, don't mean doesn't doesn't mean you're safe and all this stuff. And he's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. It's like, d does he really have to tell him that? I mean, this guy's supposed to be able to stop everybody. He's supposed to be the savior, and he can't even focus. I mean, that to me is like, ah, oh, that's horrible. So that's why Naruto has the quantity. Dragon Ball Z has the quality. This is a tie around. This is a nine nine. Okay, so that's that's it for the systematic scoring of um, you know of all the different categories that I chose. Um, of course, you know, this is subjective, so you may agree with this, you may not, but I think that uh, if you look at my numbers and everything, the way I've broken it down, I think it's pretty fair, um, and I think that, uh, yes, you could probably give one show, you might disagree and give one show one point here, one point there, difference, but really what pushes Dragon Ball Z over to win is the appeal, the, you know, the worldwide phenomenon appeal that Naruto just doesn't have. I'm sorry. As far as the rest of the categories go, I see them all as, you know, pretty much equal, except for the fighting, uh, the action, you know, um, the story is better in Naruto. But, you know, overall, I have to go with Dragon Ball Z. So, you know, in conclusion, Dragon Ball Z is the winner, 53 points to 52. Um, it just inches it out just very closely. And I had to actually break it down like this because when I just looked at the shows in general, I couldn't tell which one I thought was better overall. But now that I break it down and I compare the actual m important categories of each, I see that, you know, just narrowly, I think Dragon Ball Z has is, got to be the one to win this one. And, um, you know, really what it comes down to is it comes down to the popularity of the appeal, the characters being of better quality. You know, like I said, you know, Sasuke versus Vegeta, come on. Goku versus Naruto, come on again. You know, uh, the action sequences for the time. I gotta go with Dragon Ball Z. So Dragon Ball Z wins this. Let me know what you guys think about this. Please feel free to comment. Do a video uh, response if you want. Uh, very interesting topic. Dragon Ball Z versus Naruto. And uh, the winner for me is Dragon Ball Z. Later, guys. Bye.